uh, answering your questions because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of people with a lot of questions about uh, elections these days because there's so much out there about it. And I think everybody knows that this year we've had a fairly uh, tumultuous, I guess is the good word for it, uh, tumultuous time because there have been a lot of changes. And uh, going back to the, uh, to the primary season in June, uh, we had dates changed, we had um, absentee ballots, uh, applications mailed to everybody without having to apply for one. And it's confused a lot of people. There are people now who think they don't have to apply for an absentee ballot, which has caused a lot of telephone calls and a lot of, uh, a lot of people confused. Um, you know, it, a presidential year obviously uh, has a heightened interest for the entire community. Uh, I think you'd probably find it interesting to know that uh, we have had so far, uh, 6,400 applications for absentee ballots in Cayuga County. And four years ago, uh, there were only 2,400, 2,462 who voted absentee. So we already have three times the applications as there were people who voted absentee before. Now part of it is, we assume is the virus. Part of it is people who think they um, probably don't want to go to the polls. Um, and, and part of it is the high interest in, the, in this year's election. I think the enthusiasm on, on both parties, people are, um, you know, people are uh, eager to, to go to the polls. I think it's true in both parties. Uh, obviously, Cheryl and I don't talk politics in the in the office, we just assume that we're going to cancel each other out. <laughs> like a husband and a wife. <laughs> Which is why I never got married. <laughs> Not going to deal with being canceled out twice. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, the... Um, the, the questions that have come up in a lot of in a lot of cases are related to early voting, to uh, absentee voting, to the process itself, and I think it might be uh, might be helpful for all of you to realize that even though you may think that our jobs are political and that we have this exciting political life, our well, jobs that too. we do we do but it's, <laughs> but our jobs are logistics. Yeah. We spend, we spend our time trying to find workers, trying to tr trying to train uh, poll workers, uh, trying to make sure that the polling places are are safe, uh, trying to make sure that we have security in place for securing ballots. Uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, uh, frankly logistical problems. The, you know, delivering machines, picking up machines, locking up machines. So a lot of the time that we spend uh, at work is involved in that kind of day-to-day -day logistical uh, problems that, that need solving. Uh, and this year was, was a little bit difficult in, in that way because we had uh, the senior citizen homes were off limits as far as being able to be used as uh, polling places, so we had to move out of uh, Schwartz Towers and Boyle Center, which have been polling places for years. Northbrook. And Northbrook. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, uh, and the Grove. The Grove. We have moved out of uh, Auburn High School, uh, and that polling place is now going to be at the Pavilion at Emerson Park. And that, is, that was partly because of the, uh, the problems caused with parking with the, all the school bus traffic and with the changes at the at the school, there was so much fluidity in their schedule that there was no way to tell when it was going to be, when there was going to be bus traffic, so we couldn't even adjust to it. Uh, so, you know, it's been that kind of adjustment and, and changing things kind of in, in mid-course that has been the challenge this year. And I think I've been there, I've been there 16 years and Kate's been 12, and this is the first year we've had executive orders one right after the other, changing everything we think we're going to do. Right. Yeah, 
I mean, there were, there were executive orders about registration, there were deadlines that changed, there were elections that were canceled. So it's been a tumultuous year, um, information-wise, for us also. And, you know, we got our, the, the final court decision on, <laughs> on the congressional race in this district was last week. And we had our ballots all printed, so we were holding our breath. You know, if, they, if there'd ever been a change in the ballot, we would have had to reprint, remail. As it was this year, we had to reprint all of the envelopes. Right. The absentee twice. envelopes. Twice. Oh, that's right. Twice. Oh, uh, 26,000 each time. Oh, who uh, pays for that? Uh, Did you say who pays for that? You. You. Santa <laughs> that's what I thought. Thank you very yeah. much. Not the candidate. Uh, actually, no, <laughs> not their campaign. We actually got a COVID grant in, the, in June. And then Katie and I both chose to apply for uh, Mark, what's his name, right? Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Uh, uh, he had a grant that he, Facebook. $250 Facebook. million okay. Facebook, yeah, uh -huh. um, that he said he would donate, give to Board of Elections. So we applied for one of those. Got thirty seven thousand. Oh good. Which really Very helped nice. us with the second yeah. mailing that we I mean, we're, set of we're probably still going to have to go to the legislature and beg at the end of the year, but it's not gonna be as big a prayer. We thought we were gonna be fifty thousand in the red and maybe only fifteen. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, with uh, with moving out of I apologize for That's right. behind you, but with moving out of the the senior centers, what if anything, did you have to do, or do you have to do to then ensure that they had an opportunity to vote? Because that was a major part of you being there was their access to it. Well, they got they got a lot of notice that we were we were not going to be there, and uh, most of them appreciated the fact that they were not going to be exposed to all the people coming in from outside, which was the real uh, the real concern was exposing them in the in their own facility. Uh, we encouraged absentee balloting. We did um, a mailing of information about early voting. Uh, their polling site is, is within the city. It's, in, it's at the um, Clifford Park, Clifford Park uh, Clubhouse. And, um, you know, it's not, if, if people are uh, in need of, a, you know, rides and things like that, um, usually the political parties are pretty active in that regard, and I think they've gotten in touch with all of the senior centers and let them know that they were that they would provide rides. The um, the other centers, uh, aside from Schwartz and Boyle, the ones downtown, Stryker has always voted at City Hall, and that one is uh, is still in place. Um, and uh, you know the the uh, there's. There's a lot of opportunity for the, for them to get rides, but we've gotten mountains of absentee ballots. <clears throat> so you should have had water. That's <laughs> I should have, yeah, instead of coffee. <laughs> so if I understand it correctly, there are three ways to vote this year. The first is the easiest, most simplest way to go to the polls on November 3rd. Then we have earlier early voting which starts on Saturday at right. different locations and then there's the absentee ballot which can be mailed in or dropped off at a drop box. Can you explain each of those sure. and how they work are going to work this year? Sure. Uh, the, we have uh, 40, 40 polling sites. I don't know something like that. 30, 32. 32. 32. Seems like more every year. We have more EDs, 47 EDs, 42 polling 32 sites. 32 polling sites. The, um, we, were, uh, we had to guess how many people we thought would be going to the polls when we were ordering ballots. Uh, and, and, um, we guessed wrong. We, we, don't think we're, we don't think we're very close on our guess. Uh, we assumed that there would be a heavier absentee ballot turnout even than there seems to be at this point. We're expecting that early voting is going to be the, the crowd. We think that a lot of people are going to, and see the difference with early voting is that you don't have ballots on hand. You print, they're printed as people go through line. It's a, it's a, we have printers that, so that anybody from any place in the county can go to any one of the three places. So you, they're all the ballots are different. There's all different ballot styles. Mm -hmm. 
and we have to report returns by the town and district where people live. So we, we'd have to have 40 different ballots on hand if we were going to have everybody be able to come in and vote. So there's a, a printer that's hooked up to the poll book. You put in your, you give your name, it pops up with your district, it sends a message to the printer, and it prints the correct ballot for the place where you live. So uh, that uh, is, I think, going to be a heavier usage this year than, than it's been other years. We only had about 1,800 people <laughs> go early um, the last time, you know, two years ago, which was a very low turnout gubernatorial election. We've never had early voting during a presidential, so we don't know. It's um, a it's you don't have to go to your designated early ballot location, right? Either in the southern part of the county, northern part, or all no, the whole county. Any, anywhere you want to any go. Of those any one of those three so places. You, so you don't have and to what do are the signature on them, them like that. Yeah, no, yeah, you do the signature. Uh, Venice so Town Hall, down on Route 34. Uh, Cato Town Hall, up on Shortcut Road. And then the Clifford Park uh, Clubhouse, so you're, you're Auburn. We actually thought we might add one this year, but decided not to in Auburn. Uh, thought we'd get a lot more absentee. Maybe you should explain what a poll book is. <laughs> oh, what a poll book is? <laughs> well, I, I would assume all these, all these uh, really active community members uh, have seen a poll book. Have gone in and, and had to sign in at a, with an elect, the new electronic poll book system where uh, all of the voters are in, listed in the poll book and when you sign in instead of signing a paper book, um, you sign on, it's like a Wegmans uh, yeah. sign in, the, the uh, electronic sign in. Uh, the thing that we found is that everybody's electronic signature bears almost no, no resemblance, resemblance to, to the real signature. Yep. We call it the credit card signature. Yeah, you've got your, you've got your, uh, and young people, young people, none of them know how to write, how to do their signature. They can't, they, they, they can't read cursive and they can't sign their name. So do you have to pre-register to early vote or no. at, on one no. of the dates? As long as you're registered. My friend got a mailing. I never got a mailing. I live here in the city on, on early voting. You should have gotten got an should have got got back in September. We had yep. to send a informational mailing out to every voter in Cuga County. It's the big okay. white postcard. Yeah, yeah. 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 our early voting is uh, both Good weekends friend. are 9 to 2. Both weekends? Both weekends. Okay. So we start this, we'll start this 24th okay. and go through November 1st. Monday is uh, 9 to 5. <laughs> Tuesday and Wednesday are noon to 8. And then uh, Friday actually is early, 7 to 3. We have like different hours so that we don't miss anybody. We have night hours, morning hours, weekend hours. The um, questions over here. Yeah, That's twofold. Did you, um, I think I saw in the news today that uh, Onondaga County is getting a wave of people who are interested in serving as uh, poll workers. So I don't, know if, I don't know if that's happening and can you comment on that in Dewey County? And the other is, is voter registration up at this point? The deadline is passed for registration. Right, but is it up above previous? Yeah, right now, oh, it's up. Right now, there are 50,875 registered voters in Cayuga County. Four years ago, I don't know exactly what the registration was, but uh, only 34,000 people voted in the presidential. So uh, we, would, we would expect uh, usually about a seven, between 70 and 75 percent turnout in a presidential year. So we should be up about eight to 10,000 from what it was four years ago. That's and we printed of 100 percent of the ballots this time. Kate and I always sit down and think about how many people we think might come because it's such a waste of paper. I like to bet on it. But yeah. <laughs> she's got it. I don't like to bet on it. What's the over-under on that? I want to know the over-under on the voters. We've had, we've had some scary moments at uh, 8 o'clock on a election night in Sterling. With, oh my God, we've only got three ballots left. That type of thing. So we just went for 100%. And said, however many you know, show up, we're show ready. Show up, we're ready. <laughs> but you have the poll workers you need? Pardon? You have the poll workers that you need. Yeah, you know, um, we had some, I mean, I, obviously, all of you have looked at uh, poll workers and realized that, that uh, 
We have a significant number of senior citizens, sometimes very senior, and a lot of them were hesitant to obligate themselves. But surprisingly, fewer than I thought really, a lot opted fewer. out. Um, and they really weren't the older ones. Right. Um, but um, a lot of people volunteered. We had, a, actually we had more problems with arranging training for new poll workers than we did recruiting. In fact, we had to turn people down. Katie had to turn people down. Yeah. Democrats have been volunteering in higher numbers. Oh. <laughs> They're more civic minded. Rebuttal now. I tell her we work for a living. <laughs> wow. This is the kind of thing we go through all day. <laughs> it's how it's yeah. Do you count the absentee ballots as you receive them or do you wait until the end? Oh, you know, that's a really good question yeah. because yeah. most people think we don't bother with them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got quite a procedure for our absentee ballot uh, counting. It, it is very cumbersome, truthfully. The um, absentee ballots are coming in now at our office. We have one person from each party why, uh, opening, they slit the envelope, they open up the, the uh, for the inner envelope, and they check the signature against our record of the registration signature. If they match, then they're all put aside. We don't count any absentee ballots until the Saturday after election. The, um, you know, the fact is, in, in now a lot of states, you'll hear a lot of talk about this over the next week or so, because the, each individual state sets their own rules on this. And You've got states that count them as they come in, they accumulate those numbers, and then they announce them as soon as the polls close. Florida announces all of their early votes right at 7.30. Uh, you know, there's, there are multiple states, unfortunately, apparently Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, who are expected to be, you know, like swing states, uh, don't start counting until after the election, so they could be significantly delayed. The, um, but we, we count them starting on that Saturday and we go straight through until they're uh, all done. And they are all, we, we count all of them that are <coughs> legitimate. We have this year another process that was introduced. Another that's new law. A new law. Uh, I think also an executive order. It was an executive order. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that requires us to contact people if there's a problem with their ballot and give them a chance to cure it. So um, we're handling that. And that's like if you, uh, we've only had what, three that the signatures were really, we couldn't find a common ground at all. Sometimes we can, you know, your signature is usually your first letter's the same or your, no, we couldn't find a common ground. Yeah, we, so, we, you know, you send a notice. The, the mistake that, uh, you know, one of the reasons we had to reprint ballots was that they reprinted, they changed the directions. And I have to say there are a lot fewer mistakes this time. Right. Part of it may be that there's been so much emphasis on doing it correctly. But the other reason may be that the directions really are more explicit for the absentee ballots so that people really are being more careful. But the most, the most bizarre, uh, <laughs> The most bizarre mistake, uh, and we've probably gotten now, I don't know, I'd say six to ten. Right, easily. Easily. People send back the ballot, they send back the envelope, and they never put the ballot in the envelope. But and they, they seal, seal the envelope. envelope. <coughs> so we no can't hope. even repair it. <laughs> we, they, They've got to send a letter out now saying, uh, you need, you have to put it, your ballot inside this envelope yeah. and sign it. So wow. it takes. So it's anticipated that this year's election is going to be pretty close, I think. So if we don't even start counting the ballots until four days after the polls close, they're not. It's going to be election week or election month before election we really. Election season. Yeah. Election season. <laughs> until for those absentee ballots to count. We're not going to be able to call a winner until at least a week later. Is that it what depends I'm on, understanding? It depends on what the margin is on election night. Yeah. 
if you take a race, it's like right now we've got, what would you say, about 15% in? We yeah, decided 15. we got about 15% in. So if the race is closer than 15%, you're right. We won't know until the ballots are counted. And we won't know with somebody like our congressional candidate because it's four counties. Right. And they and may have more than we have we get the whole back. And right. yeah, they've already, they're already at like 30,000 absentees back in Onondaga for that congressional race that everybody's sick of seeing the ads for. Yeah. yeah. The, um, and the, you know, we've got, we have competitive Senate and Assembly races that could right. well end up within the, within the margins. Sure. No way of knowing. What's the farthest out date in counting absentee ballots? Like, What's the farthest you, what? The farthest out date. Like, are they usually done in a week, two weeks? It usually takes us about, I don't know, three to four days. Right. We have, we have two tables normally, four people, people at each. Mm -hmm. So eight people are opening ballots, stacking them up. And one of the things we purchased with our uh, COVID grant money was a rapid count uh, machine that uh, has has really been a godsend. It's been a it's been a real time saver on the on the uh, ballot count. And you know we audit and make sure that everything is accurate. We recount and make sure that it's that everything is is accurate and the machine's working properly. But it is a huge time saver. And that's little key. You've been very politely over there with your hand up. I'm surprised. It's okay. You're going to the right. I get it. I don't go to the right. I don't go to the right. to the left by doing this. Everything wow. that you talk about with the, all these uh, safeguards and provisions or whatever else, is this also to prevent from challenges on, on ballots and things like that? How ballots will be challenged? We get challenged? a lot less challenges when we do it the way okay. we do it, yes. Yeah, there have been. Uh, I mean, we've never, we, we haven't had this system for a presidential yet. And the only time that we've really had a, you know, a, a herd of lawyers or anything has been for congressional races. Yeah. Um, and then local races come down to one or two or five or 10 votes for a, a, lot you know, of ties. a local town race. We've, we've had ties. We've never had a real unsolvable um, dispute over the count. We've had disputes over, uh, you know, whether ballots should have been opened or not, but we have not had um, disputes over the, the, the actual numbers with a miscount. There's there's a lot of people watching and a lot of people, um, a lot of people, you know, second guessing. I guess is the best word for it. Yeah. Thank you. So um, you talked about absentee ballots and you talked about voting early. <coughs> talk a little bit about election day um, so what do people what do people need to know other than to make sure they know where their polling place is um, what anything else well there's not it, there's not a lot changed about election day itself except the things that we've had to account for because of the virus mm -hmm. uh, with cleaning, cleaning and masking mm -hmm. and the six foot social distancing we you know the the uh, markings on the floor for people to keep distance, and and, um, and if we do change polling place like we did with uh, plumbing fire departments, both plumbing fire departments, uh, we sent a card out telling the people their new polling place is such and such, and we just ordered yesterday our signs to put up at the firehouses that said your new polling place is a Masonic Hall. So if they go to their old polling place, that sign is there. We will still put up. Um, Northbrook and uh, Auburn Grove Oil and Sports, but most of the polling places don't change okay. over the years. So uh, pretty much everybody knows. And then when they register to vote new, they get an acknowledgement card that tells them their new polling place. In terms of the absentee voting, um, has that window already closed, or could people still say, you know what, I want to, I want to? People can still apply can still until the twenty seventh. Okay. By mail. By and then mail. they can come in the office. You, you can okay. go right up to the day, day before, before election. election. And is absentee voting um, the Board of Elections accommodation to people who can't wear masks for health reasons? <coughs> well, if it, we, what we have, the state has told us how we have to handle that. Some people don't wear a mask because they absolutely refuse to wear a mask, and others have obviously medical issues. They can't wear a mask. 
we, um, we actually this year decided to go with the face shields for our co-workers in case they didn't want to wear the mask 17 hours, because that's a long day right. with wearing the mask. And, uh, but we have a procedure we have to go by with the state that says if uh, somebody comes to our polling site and does not wear a mask and will not wear a mask, we have to empty the polling site out with their turn in line. The people before them would vote. We let them come in, they vote by themselves with nobody else in the polling except for the inspectors. <clears throat> and then we move the line again. We can't refuse anybody the right to vote, whether can, they wear a mask or don't wear a mask. A, uh, it's a, it's a combination. Right, right. So, okay. Can't you put a voting station outside then and have it monitored? If you want to put a voting wear, station outside? No, then? no. If someone refuses to wear a mask, let them vote outside and, and monitor, watch them vote and, and uh, take their paper. Yes, you know, well, they still have to sign in, and you know, if yeah. they, you know, if a person wants that, if a person wants to be obnoxious about it and make it, you know, just do it for the sake of 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 refusing and being noticed for doing it, you just get them through there as fast as you can and get it over. Try not to make any. Of we are, right. you know, okay. we don't we don't need to have a bunch of little old ladies <laughs> arguing with people. And I think we bought enough face side. shields that. Maybe somebody who wouldn't put a mask on would put a face shield on for the couple, and then we give them the face shields. We don't want anything right, bad. <laughs> We're not cleaning them. No. So for um, a person would apply for an absentee ballot, and then let's say they show up at the poll, and you've got a record that you sent them an absentee ballot, right? Yeah. But then let's say they're standing there and say, I came to the poll because I never got my absentee ballot. Well, either That's way, they get to vote. Whether they, whether they got their absentee ballot and voted it or whether they didn't get their absentee ballot. So now ballot. what checks to make sure they didn't absentee vote? vote First thing we do when we count. Get, they get asked. And then which one counts? The last one, the, the day, the day the that they vote. The vote machine would machine. count. Okay. Because got they their put absentee. it in the machine, that's already, that's already tallied. We would know, no way we could we tell whose vote that was, so. But we, they, the first thing we check on absentee ballots is signatures and whether they went to the polls or not. We take those absentee ballots, and that's the first list we get down through, is check it against anybody who went to the polls on election day. And those ballots are then pulled, and we don't count them. Okay. They're never open. Mm -hmm. cool. But the, the unfortunate thing, if I correct me if I'm wrong, is that not, not every state does that. <laughs> I don't know. Right? I, 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 think, I don't, I think you know, every state is so, is so different that. Yeah. A lot of them, a lot of them, if you cast your absentee ballot, they start counting them. You, you can't. You can't go to. The, the you can't go to the polls. Right. But it shows right up in the electronic poll book that we that a person got an absentee ballot. So the thing that our what our inspectors are supposed to do, and I'm sure what they do, they, they say, you know, this shows that you have an absentee ballot. You know, did you vote it? And they say, you know, no, I changed my mind. I want to put it in the machine. And fine. Just we have a lot of that. We've got a lot of calls this year, saying, what do I do? I don't want to vote by machine. I don't want to vote this ballot. Destroy it. So it's the same thing for like Rochester, where they sent out three hundred thousand ballots wrong, and then they reprinted them and sent out the right ones. Uh, it was New York. I don't know, it was a hundred thousand, and it was uh, it was a Rochester printing company. Yeah, yeah, it was a Rochester printing company, well, right. yeah. which we use, by the way. Yeah, the same company so we use. When you collect those absentee ballots, you keep track of who it came from, and you'll see that there was two. Yeah, and the absentee ballots have a have a, a, um, UPC code. a code on it, uh -huh. and then the other side is where this, the signature is. So uh -huh. the, the thing that, was, that happened was that the, they were the wrong envelopes that were shipped to Brooklyn. And uh, so people got their ballot. They had their address on the outside. When they opened it up, they had an inside envelope for somebody else, and they remailed the 100,000 envelopes to those people. So when we... So when we go to vote in person this year, all over New York State, we have to do like do the electronic instead of a well, book. I don't know if everybody. I think there. I think there's two counties. Stu Ben might not have it yet. Yeah, Stu Ben has it. I, the, the one I'm thinking of is up north. Because I'm in I'm in Seneca County, and I sign a book. I mean, we our voting place is that big, up higher, great, no line. 
They do vote in Tyre, right? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we do vote in Tyre. Um, but we Nineveh, always just sign Nineveh a book. and Tyre. Oh, yeah. Well, we just sign a book, so is that going to change for... I'm other? surprised they... I thought they had I think they've got voting. electronic voting. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I look forward to it. I use the electronic... There's only a few early early voting okay. the last time at Clifford Park. And it was kind of like a tablet from what I remember. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just... It's, 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 and it actually prints, you know, prints your signature. It looks just like the big book. It's just... Yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. your your old your signature, your official signature, and then the spot that you sign. Yeah. Okay. Cool. There's only a few counties that don't. Yeah. They they were. It might be a different vendor, so it might not be the same look that ours has. Right. But you know, they, there are several companies that provide the information. You are folks from the primary uh, uh, parties in this country. There are independents. There are also other parties. Are, are they also allowed to have? <laughs> are they also allowed to have uh, people in the election uh, in the uh, county uh, election board? Not are if they, we can help it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Two major parties. Are, are they okay? So are they allowed to be a part of the counting? Are they? Oh sure, they could come in and the watch the county. You know that kind of. They can watch, but you know, um, and this may this may come up during the next week or so. All this info, all this stuff about being going to the polls and watching. In New York, wa poll watcher is an official position. You have to have a certificate to go in and be a poll watcher. You can't just casually decide you want to go watch people vote. Uh, and part, I mean, part of it is just a matter of uh, you know you can't be crowding a polling place with everybody who wants to come down and visit and hang out and look look upon. What's going on? Yeah, but people do show up outside the polling places, right? I've seen a lot of handbills being handed out. Oh, when I was in Pennsylvania, it was yeah, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's yeah. a wild place, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That I mean, does there'd be, not, 20, there'd be that 20 doesn't people happen. outside the voting, just hanging out. Yeah. Buttons all over the place. You know? uh, the, there's a hundred foot limit in New York. Hundred feet radial limit mm -hmm. from the oh, entrance way. You can't campaign. Can't wear buttons. Can't wear campaign material. Election inspectors can't wear them. No armbands, huh? No armbands, <laughs> no armbands, no, uh, no and, but we have actually, armbands. people, we actually have people asked to take their hats off or to do, you know, turn your shirt inside out, zip your zipper up, whatever. But as we said to them this year, you know what, don't argue, get them out of the polling spot fast. Let them vote, get them out. You mentioned executive orders a number of times causing some challenges for you. Are those local executive orders? No, governor. Order? governor. 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 Executive order. Statewide executive orders. Governor. Yeah. Okay. In, in Como. Any federal no. orders? No. 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 There's no federal, there is no federal jurisdiction for elections. Each state is in charge of their own uh, election process. Right. Is there any, are, are there any proposed changes that states other than New York want to partner on for elections? For A lot of them have done the same kinds of things. You know, they, they've, they've mailed out absentee applications. Uh, they've done, uh, you know, additional polling sites. They've consolidated polling sites. They've done more early voting. I mean, most of them are doing the same kinds of things that New York is doing. The problem is that New York has a very arcane election law. So almost anything that you change has to be an executive order or, you know, passed by the legislature and take forever. Yeah. Um, so if everything is run by, you know, every state has its own, and, and I don't know if you can help me with this question, but why did the Supreme Court vote on Pennsylvania's, what's that about? Well, because it was a court challenge, and eventually anything. So what did it do? Just work its way sure, up? Sure, it worked its way up. Okay, it would, I thought that what was. What they did was make a decision on a lower court ruling. The lower court, the you know, Supreme Court in, in Pennsylvania ruled that they could count things that arrived up to three days after election. And they sustained the decision. I just thought it was strange. Did you tell me that uh, if somebody who hands in a mail-in ballot can go to the office to see that it did arrive? Mm -hmm. You can call, call the office. Call in. I get a, lot of, get a lot of calls for that. Okay. I'll, I'll check yours. Oh, thank you. I'll be glad to check it. One last question, real quick. If I were to change my address, how long would it take for that to be reflected 
in my polling place. Well, we just said we have a deadline for address changes, but 19th, yeah. Um, yesterday? But, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to where you came from. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> and isn't, it, isn't it true that if I, if I accidentally go to the wrong polling place, that when it comes up, it's going to tell me that I'm in the wrong place? Yep. I should yes. Go, mm -hmm. And they'll tell me right. exactly oh. where I need to go. Oh, you, right. Go. Right. Go. Oh, you can always <laughs> vote on what they call an affidavit right. ballot if we can't find you. And then if you, we, we find out later you should have been able to vote, we count that ballot. Well, then I'll go tell the people watching the polls outside that something's wrong. Right, you'll be on the nightly news. <laughs> be a star. Be a star. Next day, we'll be on the nightly news. That's that's our goal every election season. We do not get our name put in the citizen. <laughs> we work hard at that. Any uh, any final questions? Uh, Cheryl, Katie, uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, this is very oh, important. Try. <laughs> <laughs> well,